I built this 3D printer in my house, but I'm going to be moving it to my garage so I can print with ABS plastic, and I need an enclosure for it to print with ABS. So I'm going to be trying this ComGrow um, fold-up enclosure, and we'll see how this works. Now, I could build an enclosure myself out of insulation foam and duct tape, but this guy was $44, which is relatively inexpensive. I'm going to try it out and see how I like it. Included in the box are the fabric of the enclosure itself, a whole bunch of metal pipes, some plastic kind of three-level corners, the instructions, and some gloves because apparently some of these edges are sharp. So there's four different lengths of pipe. The common length, and then things that are added to the common length. So you have a common length plus a width pipe, a common length plus a length pipe, and then going up we're going to have a common length plus a height pipe for the height. So once you understand that, putting this thing together is pretty simple. The only other little bit is that on these T's there's two open things and then one with a little ring on it. And in the instructions those rings face up or for the top they'll face down. The only thing else you need to know about these pipes is that if you look carefully, one end is kind of bent in just slightly and the other end is open. On this pipe there's the end that's too big and then this guy here with the indentation. So this doesn't fit easily, that does fit. It's not always perfectly easy, you need to adjust it and finagle it a little bit, but once you get it in there and straight in appropriately it will slide in and connect. Once you have the top frame and the bottom frame with the uprights assembled, you just take the top frame and stick it on top. You can see that the volume of the enclosure is quite a bit bigger than the volume of the shipping box. The instructions say these pipes are stainless steel, and they certainly don't let a magnet stick to them, so I'm inclined to believe it. Setup took 15 minutes, didn't require any special tools, pretty easy. $45 and I have, that's essentially a tent for my 3D printer. Um, size is plenty generous, I have kind of a non-standard printer and it fits just fine. Um, you know, I don't think I could make this for 45 bucks. This material, I wouldn't call it insulated per se, but it seems to have kind of a reflective inside and then it has this vinyl outside. The black vinyl is just a little bit kind of sticky or tacky. Um, hopefully that'll go down over time, but I think it's going to attract a lot of dust. It looks like it's going to be pretty airtight. There's a couple of small holes where I can see light through, for example, the corner of some of these um, things that go through, but just very tiny small air holes. Now the access door has a zipper, so you have to unzip it. It does have a piece of Velcro to hold it up top. It's not quite as easy as, you know, something where you just lift a lid or open a door and access things, but it's not bad, especially since you're going to be starting a 3D print, coming back, you know, 12, 24 hours later and taking it out. So if you have a top-mounted filament spool, the zippers go all the way back so you can get access to the top pretty easily. It also has a few pockets right by the door here for you know commonly used tools. I'd be a little worried about poking through um, this vinyl cloth if you were putting you know pointy pliers or something in there, so you might want to be a little careful with that. But it's better than not having any pockets. So both sides and the rear have these little ports that you can push a power cable through. The whole thing is super lightweight and easy to carry around. Of course, because it doesn't have a solid bottom, you have to empty it completely. You can't pick up the thing and carry it with your printer. 
So aesthetically, this guy takes up a lot more visual volume than the original 3D printer, but it does look nice and neat because it hides all the wires and everything. All right, let's trust this guy out on a six out print. There's plenty of room in the back for a filament. I have a 73 degree Fahrenheit internal temperature just from the room. We'll see if that increases as this print goes along. This is the noise level with the cover unzipped. And this is the noise level with the cover zipped up. It's slightly muffled, but it's not really doing a lot of sound dampening. The only light I have in this enclosure are some LED strips that are hidden inside of that black aluminum extrusion there. And it's bouncing around quite well in here, so that silver reflective stuff is uh, very good for optical reflection and presumably temperature reflecting as well. This guy's been printing for 20 minutes and the internal temperature's gone up to 77 just with the waste heat from the bed and the extruder heater. I've been printing for an hour and a half and it's up to 84 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 11 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit higher than ambient. Three and a half hours and the temperature inside is 86 Fahrenheit. It's about 73 Fahrenheit ambient, so it's raised at about 13 degrees Fahrenheit. My um, heated print bed here is set to 70 centigrade, and that's probably the largest driver of heat, although the nozzle is set at 200 degrees centigrade. So here you can see the infrared view of the enclosure, and obviously it is radiating heat because the inside is warmer than ambient. Um, you can see through the clear um, plastic window here that you can see the heat from my printer. The printer just turned off, just stopped printing. So the bed is pretty much as hot as it is, and the enclosure is about as hot as it's going to get on this run. Um, so you can see here the outside of the enclosure is 16 to 17 degrees centigrade. Ambient here is kind of in the 12 degree range. It looks like there might be a little more heat on this back side. I'm not sure why. But it's relatively even. Right here is a little warmer, which is near where the heated bed is. You can see the 21, 22 is kind of right where the extruder is as it's cooling down. The uh, 18 or so is there at the top of the heated bed. So it's not a perfect insulator, but it is keeping heat inside. Okay, I've moved this guy out to my garage and switched over to printing ABS. All right, ambient temperature is 70 Fahrenheit. We're going to turn on the bed preheater and also turn on the extruder uh, a little bit lower than ABS preheat, maybe 110, and let this fan blow some hot air around here for a while. All right, I have the print bed and the extruder and its fan going at 115 centigrade. It's been going for 38 minutes now, and it's raised the temperature inside from the 70 degree ambient to 79 Fahrenheit. If you wait 40 minutes, you get, you know, 9 or 10 degrees of heat rise. Well, I came out here and maybe 20, 30 minutes into the build, it had frozen. Ambient temperature's up to 86, but I think I have either a problem with the electronics getting too hot and rebooting, or my power supply is suspect, so I'm gonna go plug into a different outlet. And it appears to have shut down again. And it crashed, and I was here to see it crashing. The lights turned off, this guy's flashing, my fan is still going because it's hooked to a five volt power supply externally. I do not think this is a heat issue with the control electronics. I think this is a power supply heat issue, which means I need a new power supply. All right, I have a name brand Chinese power supply to replace the janky Chinese power supply, which I'm hoping will fit in the same area, and I'm hoping these holes will match up correctly. Well, being just slightly longer and slightly wider is a problem. So now I have to make a new mounting system. Luckily, I have a sort of working 3D printer. New power supply, not exactly installed, but running the printer. Let's try this thing with ABS again. 
All right, it's been going for an hour and 30 minutes. We're up to 99 degrees Fahrenheit inside of the enclosure. Okay, I've been printing for two hours, and the temperature inside the enclosure is high. Apparently, I need to find a better uh, temperature gauge that can actually register just how high that is, but apparently above 99. Been running two and a half hours. Looks like the internal temperature is stabilized pretty close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This print is getting close to being finished. So far it has good adhesion to the bed and no warping. Although this is a type of print that has some holes in the middle for a kind of stress relief and so you don't have differential expansion as much. Next up I'm going to be trying a flat print. All right, we have here about a three inch by two inch flat piece. Has a couple little screw holes in it, but as you can see, this is exactly the type of thing that would warp and have the corners lift and so forth. And there's absolutely none of that happening here. So I'm thinking this uh, enclosure is doing a pretty good job keeping the build envelope at a warm enough temperature so that doesn't happen. The one feature this enclosure didn't come with that I wish it had is an integrated rolling solution for filament. So I took some wire, hung it up between those two side posts, and with another piece of wire I can have this guy mounted directly above my printer. It would be nice if they had some type of side post going across or a post sticking out that you could hook a uh, roll on top of and not have to jury rig your own thing. Okay, we have lost adhesion. I don't know if that's because I'm trying a slightly lower bed temp. I went down to 100 centigrade instead of 110. Or maybe if it's because I haven't sprayed this thing with hairspray for quite a while. So I'm going to go back up to 110, spray it with hairspray, reprint this part, and see if we can have better results. The temperature inside, it says high, which in my experience means it's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so the envelope temperature is about as hot as I'd want it to be. I think this might be more of the bed temp and maybe lack of adhesion in general. But warping will sometimes pop it up and cause it to break adhesion. Okay, you can clearly see there's the classic uh, ABS warping going on there. At first it broke apart this support material and then it probably popped the whole thing off the bed. So I'm going to try a little bit of hairspray, turn up the bed temperature, and see if I can get this part to print better. You can see it's kind of a long, thin part. So it's definitely one of those test your warping settings type of part. Well that worked out much better the second time through. I'm not sure if it was having the envelope preheated or if it was the um, changes in temperature settings I used. But bed adhesion was very good, no warping. I have some uh, support material I have to snap off here. But that part looks exactly how it's supposed to look with ABS. All right, that print was basically perfect. I'm doing a big piece that has a uh, pretty big, long, flat base, and then it went up there. Again, we don't have any visible lifting of the edges or warping. So I'm going to say that I am pretty happy with this enclosure. Okay, so we have a pretty small, kind of longish base here. And you can see it was nice and flat all down there. No warping, no cracking as you go through this. So the ABS held together, the layers all held together. So that was a successful print. So this is an IKEA pizza slicer blade guard. And this is one I printed when I didn't have an enclosure. And the bottom warped slightly up, so if, I'm not sure if you can see right here, but this side popped up a little bit. And the layers had some separation due to warping, so you can see there's a crack here and a little smaller crack over there. Um, so that was ABS without the heated enclosure, so I got a little bit of cracking between layers and some warping on the bottom. And that was a good print. I printed two or three times to get the good one. This guy here, I printed once. The bottom stayed stuck the entire time. I don't have any cracks in the layer lines. You can argue that my print quality wasn't as good because it's a different printer, but, um, you know, the enclosure is doing a real good job here of keeping that ABS together. 
All right, so I've been using the Congro enclosure for my printer out in the garage for a couple days now with some um, ABS plastic. I printed lots of things, and you can see that I'm getting nice flat pieces of plastic here. They're not pulling up from the print bread, they're not warping, and all the layers are staying stuck together. Um, you know, so I can have things like this that, you know, the bottom's completely flat. It hasn't, you know, popped up from the build plate. I don't have things warping or cracking. Um, so the heat being retained in the enclosure there is doing what it's supposed to do. So all in all, I'm quite happy with this purchase. It worked well for me, um, and I recommend getting an enclosure of some type. It could be this one or it could be a different one, but the enclosure is definitely working for me.